All right, everyone, welcome back. Guys, today I got another speed versus air weight profile for you, and the bow we're doing it on should be no surprise. It's the new Killer Instinct Vital X 430, so stay tuned. All right, everybody, here's the game plan for the speed versus air weight profile of the Vital X 430. It's essentially gonna be the exact same thing I did for the Diesel X and the SWAT X1. So if you've already seen those videos, literally carbon copy, we're just doing it on the Vital X 430. If you haven't, here's kind of the, the setup and what I've got. So I've got a chronograph, I've got a Caldwell chronograph. It's nothing fancy and it is not calibrated. I've also got a scale, again, not calibrated. I've got two different arrows. I've got the stock Killer Instinct Hyper Arrows. That's what's gonna come with the Vital X 430. And that is going to give me my lightest uh, arrow weight combination. So that arrow with a 100 grain field point, as I have weighed it for this test on my scale, is 392 grains. My heaviest combination with my heavy arrow, that is a Sirius Phoenix. Uh, with a 300 grain point, and that is going to come out at 638 grains. Now, between those two arrows, and I have a 100, a 125, and a 150 grain field point, as well as Sirius Archery's Ranch Ferry Test Kit, the 200 to 300 grain test kit, those are in 25 grain increments. I basically got point weights almost all the way from 100 to 300 grains. I'm missing a 175, but because that Phoenix arrow is almost 50 grains heavier than the Killer Instinct Hyper arrow, I can play with some point weight combinations between the two arrows, and we essentially are gonna run through the chronograph in 25 grain increments from 392 all the way to 638. Now, after we do that, we're gonna plop all this stuff in Excel, and when we get to Excel, I'll show you how we build the complete arrow profile. Let's head out in the backyard and rip this thing through the chronograph, and then we'll be back in Excel. All right, you guys, who's ready to nerd out in Excel? I'm down here in the basement. I got everything from the chronograph, all the values that we measured loaded up here in Excel. So we're going to go through the whole speed versus weight profile for the Vital X 430. Now, before we do, you guys, just as I said before, just kind of disclaimer, my chronograph, not calibrated. My scale, not calibrated. So if you see other videos other reviews of vital x 430 speeds and things like that i guess just know that things might vary a little bit and honestly everything that i've used and everything that everybody else will use there's tolerance built into it some setups uh as far as scales and chronographs are going to be better than others your scale your chronograph they're going to have tolerance built into it your arrows are going to have tolerance your point weights are going to have tolerance and the whole bow itself there's going to be some tolerance built into it. So things may vary depending on what reviews you watch, but I think this is a, a good representation, a good tool to use for the Killer Instinct Vital X 430. Uh, also, you guys, down below in the description, you can download this file as a PDF to your computer. Keep it, use it however you want. I think it's a really good tool to use for initial speed ring optic settings when you get your bow depending on what arrow weight you're going to be shooting you can use this to give you a a really good starting point for dialing in and calibrating that optics package uh, or if you just don't have a chronograph and you don't want to buy one i think this is a a better representation of what you can expect from your bow and your setup versus just some generic online calculator that makes a lot of assumptions at this is at least actually measured stuff that we're then going to use Excel, calculate and extrapolate it beyond what we measured. So with that said, let's dive in to the speed versus arrow weight profile. Up here 
in the top left, highlighted in yellow, are the actual measured values through the chronograph for each arrow weight setup. Um, from 392 grains, measured at 414, all the way down to 614 grains, measured at 337. I told you guys we would go to 638, and I actually misspoke. It would have been 639, but I apologize. I ran out of daylight, and my chronograph was giving me errors. If it doesn't have enough uh, light, it, it just doesn't work. So... I'm sorry, I did not get that very last one for you, but it what you guys will see over when we move over to the graph is it, it really doesn't matter. We've got a really good linear data set here. A couple things just to point out on this measured set. One, we're hitting 160 foot-pounds of kinetic energy, which is just freaking awesome. Um, that, is a, that is a number that uh, I have not seen yet. Um, with all the bows that I have. So that's really cool to see getting kinetic energy values up that high. Also with that, if you kind of look at the measured values with kinetic energy being basically its peak. So going up, hitting that 160 ish mark, and then starting to go back down, this is kind of that window as far as your maximum efficiency for the Vital X 430 or the area or the window of arrow weight where the bow is transmitting the maximum amount of energy to the arrow itself. So somewhere between 517 and 567 per what we measured is that window you want to be in. As always though, none of that stuff matters if it doesn't fly right. So you got to target somewhere in that window and still be getting perfect arrow flight for the, the best setup that you can possibly have. Now, taking these measured values, we scroll over to the right, and we're going to graph those measured values on this graph right here. So the measured values are these orange and black points, and then the, the lines associated with it. That's that, that line that's kind of stepped and stuff. Um, that's exactly what was in that yellow chart. And then what we're able to do in Excel is we can add a best fit line to it. And in this case, I added a linear best fit line. That's what you're going to see here in orange. From that linear best fit line, we can derive an equation. Excel does that for you. And that's what you're going to see here. These numbers, the y equals numbers up here on the top. And what we can do with that equation is then we can calculate based on that linear best fit line, anything in between what we measured, or we can extrapolate that best fit line beyond what we measured and get values for things either less than 392 or more than 614 and what i did i didn't go on the the lesser side of things i took it all the way to 700 grains and i'll show you guys that when we scroll back over to the calculated values this r squared value here that you see that is an indicator as to basically how good of a trend line you picked for your data set so the closer that number is to one the the better it is basically one is a, a perfectly linear data set so anything up there close to one is basically saying you picked a good type of trend line for the data set that you have so the fact that ours is 0.9936 means that using a linear best fit line is exactly what we should be using for this data set is a very linear data set and that's what makes it a very good data set to then calculate all the values from 392 all the way down to 700 grains in one grain increments and have confidence that those values are going to be pretty darn good. So that's what this entire big, you know, sheet is right here. That's calculated values using that linear best fit line. A couple things to note on this. You're going to see the input value for X. That is just making the equation work don't worry what the number is in here but if you see a highlighted number and they're basically numbers without decimals one two three four etc what these are telling you is instead of using the calculated value let's take 417 for instance what you should do is if you're at 417 grains or honestly if you're if you're really close to it it's probably better for you to instead of using the calculated speed of 405.7 feet per second, it's probably better for you to go up here and use the measured value of 402. So if you look at that value on the graph, you'll see the linear best fit line is, is not right on the actual measured value. So if you're, if you're really close to one of these speeds, 
it's kind of up to you as far as what is the best estimator, a measured value or a calculated one. But I would I would lean toward the actual measured ones up here in the graph if you're within like a grain or so of uh, of one of these arrow weights instead of the calculated one. If you're somewhere right in the middle or in between or whatever, totally fine to use the calculated. And then obviously if you're beyond what we measured, that's what you're going to see here in gray. This is me taking that line and just extending it to 700 grains. That is why these cells are highlighted in gray is because I moved that line down beyond what we actually measured. Uh, one thing that's really cool, you guys, all the way out to 700 grains, we're still over 300 feet per second, which I think is is absolutely awesome. And then it, scrolling back up, similar to what we talked about on the measured values, that 517 to 567 kind of being that sweet spot as far as where our kinetic energy was the highest. From the measured value side of things, the highest kinetic energy measured is at 538 grains. It's basically right in the middle of that window from our, our measured values. So again, just kind of confirming that targeting something in that 517 to 567 or if you want an exact number of 538 based on calculations is where this bow seems to operate the most efficiently. As I said before, once again, it has to fly for it to be a truly effective setup. So you guys, that is kind of the gist as far as the Killer Instinct Vital X 430. I hope as always that this helps you guys out. If it did, please do me a favor, hit that like button down below. If you haven't already, Please don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you guys soon on the next video. Take care, God bless, and remember, be a sportsman, make a sportsman.